Are you tired of feeling like a mad scientist juggling beakers and Bunsen burners to figure out and manage your ML workflow and you don't know how to make your data science messy notebooks ready for production? Well, buckle up because I have a solution for you that will make you feel like a superhero. Wow, is this video sponsored by an energy drink producer company maybe? Right? <laughs> no, but I'm introducing a new capability called MLflow recipes. Okay. As in a standard recipe, now data scientists can make use of a prefabricated files and folders mm. to start developing and productionizing machine learning workflow and save the time. So now you can define, track, and share your machine learning steps all just in one place. Then that's it. Let's standardize our machine learning development process through a predefined template across the team members of data science team so they can mm -hmm. start developing and productionizing them through MLflow recipe, right? Then, let's go! Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome to MLflow recipes video. Well, as of now with this capability, you no longer need to specify your own files and folders for your data science and machine learning workflow. And each individual team member might have different way of structurizing machine learning steps that might cause some overload of managing all these specific modularized Python codes or any data science code and make them ready to go all the way to production. Now with MLflow recipes, you can have an standardized recipe, a prefabricated files and folders. You just clone them in your development environment and now all data science team members will follow the same structure to develop any single machining step, which brings us a lot of benefits. For example, you can start quickly. Now you can clone your templates for let's say classification or regression recipes by MLflow, have the template there and start to just adjust them for your machine learning project and, and develop faster. Second, you can iterate faster because the intelligent engine that runs your recipe can remember each single machine learning steps that you ran before. So if you want to rerun them again, if there's no change on those and the results going to be the same, so the engine won't run your machine learning steps again and it will run just the step needed to be running again. That's gonna speed up your process. And lastly, because this MLflow recipe is well integrated with Git, it will make your process and speed much, much faster for going all the way to production, of course, up on approvals. Stop talking, let's dig in and see the main capabilities of what is MLflow recipes. Let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, let's check out what is MLflow recipes. So if you previously checked the video that I recorded, the recap video about Data and AI Summit 2022 announcement, one of the announcements that they made, besides some Databricks release and, and some new features, uh, there were another announcement about MLflow that was called MLflow Pipeline, uh, which was going to get introduced with MLflow 2.0 version. So what we're going to talk about is actually MLflow pipeline or used to be known as MLflow pipeline, but now it got changed to MLflow recipes. Based on the current time that I'm recording and sharing this video, this is in an experimental phase. So you might see more updates, more changes, uh, more news coming in with MLflow recipes. But since as of now, the documentation has been released and the features announced and ready to be used, I basically think this is great time to actually talk about this. And even as of now, start leveraging this great open source capability. And if you have feedbacks, you can always share back to community. So what is MLflow recipes? Let's just start with the problem that MLflow recipe is going to help us to, to resolve that as a solution. So as a data science team, whether you are working in a startup company, whether you're in an enterprise company that you're trying to establish the best practices for your data science team, you're using, you're dealing with maybe just one data science or ML project or multiple hundreds of even different machine learning projects. So what you have been always potentially asked from yourself is, is there any way to standardize my machine learning and data science development steps and all the way to production? Because me, MG, as a data scientist, 
I might come up with a different way of writing down, let's say, my ingestion Python code and then transformation Python code, training Python code. So how can I define these mach typical machine learning steps with almost all variety of different machine learning steps? You always ingest data, you always transform data, you train data, so on and so forth. So how can I make these steps in a standardized way, like a template that I can give it to all my data scientists to follow the same template? So this is exactly what MLflow Recipes is doing. So it is giving us a template, a prefabricated, created files and folders. You just go there, change them, and make some modifications based on your machine learning use case, and you're good to go. You can use it for, as of now, the template for classification and regression has been released, and again, it is evolving. So, so you might see more and more templates coming in with MLflow recipes. So now, here's the main question then. Okay, I, I know what is MLflow recipes, but let's say with using this template that comes with recipes, I can standardize this ingestion all the way to registration and deployment and sort of productionize my machine learning model. But what are the benefits? If I follow this MLflow recipe capability, what are I going to earn as the main benefits of MLflow recipe? So let's talk about further about benefits. So here I'm highlighting mainly three main benefits. What is the first one? Well, you get a start very quickly. So instead of developing your Python code folders and subfolders and, and the structures and making sure it is aligned with best practices, sharing with the rest of the team that, hey, this is the way I'm structuring, structurizing my ML artifacts, you don't need to do so. You can just grab this template and go there and change it. So, for example, if you want to grab a template and start training a regression model, just git clone recipe regression template this is actually coming from mlflow recipes documentation you can change the regression to classification and you will see actually all the templates are are being generated for you and you no longer need to create from scratch so getting you started quickly let me show you actually this repository so there you go you can see that those notebooks that i talked about the steps i'm going to talk about actually the the, the files and folders that comes with MLflow. So don't worry if you don't understand these uh, pre-fabricated artifacts coming from MLflow recipes. I'm going to describe them completely. But here is what you're expecting to clone. And there you go. You can go there and change them. And here are some documentations. And you can see the flow of your regression going to get created based on this MLflow recipe, which is a standardized, standardized way to go. OK, what is the second benefit? Iterate faster. Why? Because first, not only you will start quickly for all in the use case. Second, the intelligent engine that's going to run your MLflow recipe and all these templates will remember and understand your machine learning steps. So for next time when you rerun those codes, it will just run the steps needed to get running. Let me give you an example to make it clear. For example, here, let's say I run this MLflow recipe and I ingested the data, split it, transform, blah, 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 and all the way I registered my model in MLflow, right? So let's say I'm going to rerun this process again because I, I made a slight change on the transformation code, but this, the same data, ingestion is the same, splitting the same. So if I'm running all and on again, why should I need to run ingestion and splitting again if I just change the transformation? So MLflow recipe won't run these two steps and it will run just a transformation. That's why you will save time making it faster and less expensive. So you're going to pay less for the compute because these two will not run. Again, this is just an example, right? So that's what iteration faster means. And what is the last one? Easily switch between environments. What, what does that mean? If you're developing this solution into an in development environment and now you want to go to uh, non-prod or a staging or test environment and then you want to go to production environment you don't need to go to your codes and change your ingestion let's say address from dev to prod blah 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 because this template is parameterized and modularized we're just changing one specific parameter in this recipe that i'm going to talk about that as well you can switch entire solution from running on let's say the dev environment all the way to test or staging environment so it will make it much easy to do not change all the codes to switch to the different environments 
and of course production is one of the environments that we're gonna go there so we can with just a quick change in parameters we can uh, switch the running of the codes all the way to another environment so and this is about sort of the last main benefits of mlflow recipes now let's talk about what are the artifacts that comes with mlflow recipe i just show you quickly the github repository you saw some folders and files i told you i gonna explain them so let's dig in further so i want to make it step by step do not let's do not make it complicated okay so what is the first thing of course with your let's say here for the demo i'm gonna run it's a regression model but it can be again also classification for regression again what are the typical machine learning steps you ingest data split transformation train your model evaluate your best model and then register the model if you want to later on let's say deploy it right these are some python files each step actually is a separate modularized python code and can be a separate modularized python code let's say ingest.py split.py transform.py train.py so mlflow recipe will give you all these files so what you need to do is just go there and change them based on your project let's say you want to train your regression model so go to train.py change it let me actually show you the github repository that's going to be even easier to explain from there let me find it. There you go. So if I go to steps, here are some templates coming for, let's say, regression. Let's say you're going to click on train.py. There you go. You'll see that this is the place I can uh, define. Here is the estimator coming from, I think, scikit-learn to sort of train your model. Or let's say I want to go to split my data to train and test. So there you go. You can have your data set and create the data set sort of splitting under this function. So I do have the template for these files coming in. Okay, what is next? Well, you have to define the sequence of running these codes, right? I have to tell in a way to MLflow recipe that, hey, I want to in run ingest.py first and then split and transform. Sort of defining a pipeline. That's why MLflow recipe used to be called as MLflow pipeline. So in order to do so, you have to define this sequence in a recipe. This is actually sort of the main guy or the main secret sauce behind MLflow recipe. So within this YAML file that I'm going to show you uh, quickly how this YAML file look like, you will not only define your steps, but also you will uh, add the value of the parameters for some of these steps. Uh, for example, let me give you an example. Uh, you have a split.py that split your data for training and testing, right? Or training, validation, and testing. So you have to specify a ratio. A ratio is a parameter you have to define for a splitation. What is ratio? Let's say I want to divide or split my data 80% for training, 20% for testing. So 80, 20, these are the ratios. Where you define the value of this ratio as a parameter inside this recipe. So you say that in recipe, hey, as a second step, run a split. And for ratio, here is the value, 80, 20. A split ratio was as an example what else for example for evaluation here what is the metric you want to evaluate your model accuracy precision recall for classification or root mean score error for creation as an example so you have to define the value of that parameter which is evaluation metric inside this recipe as well so in order to show you how this look like here's a quick snapshot of the code as you can see in this recipe file i'm defining my steps that hey run ingestion then a split, what is the split ratio? There you go, I'm adding the variables, value of the variables here. Then transformation, there are some custom transformation. Okay, where it's coming from? It is coming from transformer function. That's a function name inside my transform.py code. And so on and so forth. Okay, but still there is one thing left. I talked about the fact that you can easily switch between environments and stuff, right? So there should be more high level parameters that I can change the values, right? Let's take a more closer attention to this recipe YAML file. You see that, for example, the first step is ingestion, which ingests the data, but I have to define where the data is coming from. Is it in Databricks? Is it in the local file? Is it a table? Is it a Spark table, data frame? What is it? What is it? It's a configuration that we have to define here. But I'm not defining it here. I am referring to a parameter. But where is this parameter defined? Well, there is another higher level YAML file that is called profile. Let me go all the way back. There you go. There's another profile YAML file that my recipe YAML file 
will get some of its parameters values from this guy. So how does profile YAML look like? For example, here, see it's more high level. I'm talking about that word. Give me a name for experiment. You define it in profile. What is the ingestion config? There you go. Let's say here I'm calling a, lo uh, a DBFS database file system local path to get my uh, data, or it's a SQL table, so I can write down a SQL query here. I'm defining my ingestion config, I can define my prediction config, I can define my scoring config, all different configurations here. And when, let's say, I want to run this solution instead of dev to prod, what I'm going to do, I can have another sort of profile um, YAML file that talks about prod YAML. So when my recipe is loading the information from prod YAML, that ingestion config gonna be prod data ingestion config. So you can see how steps, recipe, and profile is connected together to sort of create an end-to-end -end standardized way and a modularized way so you can quickly iterate through different machine learning use case for now classification and regression. So long story short, let me summarize it to make sure we all understand that the components. Here's the structures of artifacts that comes with MLflow recipe. First, you have that recipe YAML file I told you, which is actually here, that talks about the sequence of the steps. It's like defining a pipeline. Uh, you have some requirement.txt. That's a, that's a text file that uh, include the PIP packages you need to install for your uh, use case, let's say, installing scikit-learn, and TensorFlow, whatever you want, you want to make sure you have it for running these codes. Then the steps, of course, under steps, you have your modularized code. These are, again, some templates comes with ML4 recipe. The profile here, I'm going to run this demo on Databricks. That's why my profile is a Databricks YAML. But if you can certainly run ML4 recipes out of Databricks as well, that's an open source capability. So you can run the local YAML file that talks about local configurations, a local CSV file that's going to be inside ingestion config. But here for me, going to be Databricks config. That's why I have sort of Databricks oriented ingestion config. Then there's actually another folder called test that will have some unit test for these steps. For example, for ingest.py, make sure my ingestion code is working properly. There's a test code as well to test this one so you can change it. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how these MLflow recipe looks like in action and run a demo for you. So again, let me show you the template that comes actually with uh, MLflow recipe that I already showed you. Okay, I don't know, for some reason my mouse, as exactly now when I'm recording this video, it stopped working. So I have to use the, the touchpad of my laptop, which I'm not a big fan, it's a bit hard, sorry. So here's the recipe regression template that comes with MLflow recipe, right? So I explained already all these components. There's one thing also left, which is the notebook. This is sort of a notebook, like a driver that will start MLflow recipe, right? So with MLflow recipe, you have your steps, you have your profile, YAML file stuff, but you have to sort of have a code to run and start and drive this MLflow recipe, right? That's the notebook. So I'm gonna use that notebook to run the rest of this recipe. But this recipe is raw, it's a template you have to fill in. There is already a field one uh, for, I think, taxi fare, taxi fare prediction, which is the regression model. I'm going to add the GitHub of that NYC taxi data set uh, with MLflow recipe to the video description as well. So I'm going to run that one and show you filling that one, for example, for NYC taxi data use case, how it's going to look like to run them in Databricks as an example and see some even further cool uh, capabilities. Okay, let me open up my Databricks. There you go, here is my Databricks, and as you know that there is a repo capability in Databricks that you can clone any any repo that you want. I already uh, cloned a couple of Databricks repositories. Uh, the one that is called Recipes Regression is actually the template that comes for MLflow recipe. You can see that I have already cloned, I think, yeah, the regression template that I can start my developing my own use case using this recipe. But there's already a field, already field recipe for NYC taxi data use case that I have cloned that one as well, which is this one. I'll, I'll also add again the git clone URL of this template that you can run it by yourself. So under this example, I have regression one. 
So for regression, you can see that I have my steps. Let's quickly take a look at the steps. I have my ingestion, Python code. You can see that he's telling me that, oh, you're, I'm loading sort of a local CSV file as an example through the given path, right? So what is next? You can see it's, it's pretty simple, but you can certainly make it even further complex based on your use case. What is next? I'm splitting my data, right? So I'm splitting my data uh, and I'm creating a data set sort of filtration based on the split ratio and of course making some adjustment to my f specific features and then return them all the way back based on the given filtration uh, values. Then I want to train a model, right? So here I'm, I'm just using a pretty simple STD regressor from scikit-learn to sort of train my model. And what is next? Transformation. Of course, I want to do some featureization transformation. You can see I'm calculating my features, changing some types, converting some values, date time, seconds of stuff, and then all the way running some further transformation we okay, remember actually these function names that because we're gonna call them using this name in my recipe YAML. And there you go, here's I'm defining steps for my transformation pipeline, sort of encoding, typical machine learning steps, right? Again, these are just examples that has been filled that the initial MLflow recipe gonna be empty. You have to fill in based on your own use case. So I have my steps, perfect. Let's go to back to my whiteboard. So we just talked about these parts, right? And then let me show you the recipe, the place that I'm going to define the execution of these steps. So let me go back. I click on the recipe. There you go. So first of all, it's going to give me a recipe uh, version and name. So this is the regression we want. What is the target column that I'm going to predict? Again, this is the fair amount for taxi and YC data. So this is the column name that I'm going to predict. What is the primary metric that you want to evaluate the regression? Well, it's going to be root mean square error. Okay, let's run your steps. The first one, ingestion. How are you going to ingest the data? Oh, I have an ingestion config. But where it's coming from? If you have forget, forgotten, this is the place. So the ingestion config that recipe wants comes from, oops, sorry, from profile. YAML, which is this guy, and you will see the ingestion config file here that I'm going to show you quickly. Okay, so we are not worried about this. What is the split ratio for the second step? Well, I'm giving the values here, so my split.py is going to get this. Then the same thing, I'm running transformation, training, evaluation. Here are my evaluation criteria. Let me scroll a little bit down. And then last thing is registering my machine learning model in MLflow. And of course, if you want to run some custom metrics, there's a custom metrics.py that you can run it and you have a specified how you're going to calculate the weight mean square error for your, that's optional if you want it actually. Okay, so one thing left. We talked about ingestion configs coming from profile YAML. Let's take a look at that one too. Um, there you go. I'm looking for profile folder. So I'm not running on a local machine. I'm running on Databricks. This is my Databricks YAML. There you go. The ingestion config is here. And the data, NYC taxi data that I have is coming from the sample data set that comes with Databricks under this Databricks file system path, right? So it's using a Spark SQL, but if it's a table, you can call it from a table, like a Delta table, whatever it is. Let's say for a scoring, for prediction, but here I'm just using the ingestion because now I'm just training the data. I'm not doing prediction or, or scoring, right? Give it a name to the model if I want to register it. So this is the model name. And give me the URI for your model registry, the MLflow URI. If I'm not giving anything here, it's going to use the MLflow URI that comes with Databricks and the cluster runtime. So that's why going to use the MLflow that already comes with Databricks. Okay, now let's go back to my whiteboard where we are. We talked about the steps, recipe, the profile, the ingestion, configure stuff. How do I run it end to end? I told you there is a driver notebook that will run your ML for recipe. Where is that? If you go to notebooks, again, this is for local, this is for Databricks. So I click on it. There you go. This is what I ran actually. I think it was yesterday or the day before, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to quickly show you. It, it's very short and simple. So first, you have to install the P packages needed for your machine learning use case. Where they're coming from, you have to define them in requirement text. Where is it? 
Well, that's here. Let me go one step back. There you go. Here, I'm just, I want to use, make sure MFLow 2.0 because I'm going to use ML for recipe that comes with 2.0 and some other Python functions, uh, sorry, libraries that going to be different based on your use case. Okay, let me go back again to my um, notes, driver notebook. So I ran this successfully and it took me almost 24 seconds to run all these Python libraries getting installed. Then, there you go. I want to now run my MLflow recipe. So from MLflow recipe, this new capability, import recipe. And then the first thing I'm going to ask is, okay, give me the driver. Sorry, the profile, which is this guy. So I it won't at first understand are you using Databricks or a local. So two options, right? Profile. I have local and Databricks. I want to say, I want to profile this with Databricks because I'm in Databricks. That's it. Now I have my profile. I'm going to make sure I clean all previous steps. It's optional. Then what I did, I want to inspect the flow of, and sequence of my end-to-end -end machine learning use case. Look at this nice tag. We just say r.inspect. It is, it is going through all these components that I have, figured out how they're sequentially connected, check out the, the parameters that get in, and visualize the end-to-end -end process. This is the standardized way for any regression model as of now within my company, as an example. You see that ingestion going to be doing with ingest.py. I'm doing scoring, let's say, here I'm not doing actually any scoring, so that's why there's no scoring data coming in, or same thing for prediction. But what I do now, I just have my ingestion data, then I split it, then I have some validation data set, putting aside for later on testing my model in evaluation step, then I do the rest for training. For training, I have to transform the data. So the transform.py is going to transform this training data. When I have that transform data using the transformers, then I'm going to go and train my model with training data and validation data, right? And of course, for training the model, I need my train.py. You can see that how this end-to-end is going to get visualized for me, and finally, the best model is going to get registered. This is awesome. So let's run it. What is the first step? Ingest. So I want to say, hey, go to my recipe and run the first step, which is ingest. I ran it. It took me almost 20 seconds. It's loading just the local uh, NYC taxi data. And the nice thing that I was highly surprised is the fact that it will quickly profile this step for you. What do I mean? Well, I ingested the data. It quickly showed me, okay, how many features you have, the numeric ones, let's say the drop off date time, pick up, they did pick up the taxi, pick up date time. Uh, what is the count number of rows for this feature? How many missing values you have? What is the mean standard deviation for this feature? Quickly it provides, and even the distribution for log or expanded, it is amazing. So I can even get the quantiles as well. I can get out the schema. Like, what is the, the type of my features that I ingested? I can check out the preview. Okay, I wanted to make sure, okay, I have trip distance for taxi, I think, let's say, kilometers or miles, whatever it is, I, I, I can have a quick overview, and then run summary, how long it took, where the data coming from. Honestly, this is amazing. The next thing is splitting the data. Second step, let's run it. I did the same thing. I just ran this very simple Python code, and check that out. Because it knows that I'm splitting the data, it has a visualized UI specifically for a split step. So it's telling me that after splitting, let's say your feature called fair amount uh, got to this amount of counts. Let's say I think this is for training data set. The validation is yellow, so 2,000 for validation. For test, I have 2,700 rows for test data set and 16K almost for training. And the same thing for all features, how many missing values I have, the distribution, so on and so forth. And of course, the run summary, I can check out the number of training validation test data that I have after this split spin. Again, amazing. Then I'm going to transform this data. I quickly ran this. There you go. You can see the new make features generated after my feature transition steps. Now I have more features because I did some encoding stuff. You can see the features generated with the profile. What is a transformer? How do I transform? There you go. There's another visualized uh, tag that show me, okay, I use one whole encoder for these specific columns, and that's why I have more features got generated, I think 34 features. What is the input? This is the input. What is the output after transformation? There you go. These are all my encoded sort of columns. 
and fair amount is something that I'm gonna predict this is our uh, label okay let me go up data preview you can see the preview of data and run summary in just one minute sorry 1.88 seconds I ran it then let's do a training I do run the train I can check out the model performance quickly after finishing this step with all the metrics gonna get generated for me I can see the predictions as well when I did the validation and let's say testing there you go what was the target and what was I predicted so it's actually the count but I can actually show you show uh, see the model architecture it's a regressor I can see the model schema what is the input and what is the output the output is the, the, the fair taxi fare what are the worst predictions so based on what was the real value and what we predicted let's say the fair amount was $260 we predicted $5 so there's a 250 45 um, difference that that's a that's not a good prediction so it's giving me the worst predictions here but in general let's say uh, the worst versus what we, we trained we can check out the differences here as well how many zeros we have the percentage there um, I haven't personally checked all these tabs but I see some even cool features here like uh, I think these are relevant again to the performance of my the best model the best parameters oh there you go I can have the hyper parameters of the best model this is fantastic warning logs that's okay and run summary it took me like this amount and there you go I can even get the the URI of ML flow for this model let's quickly actually check out together I want to open that awesome you can I can see the ML flow artifacts generated for this model uh, my python model requirements the codes oh check that out all those steps that i had is now available here so end-to-end -end package is ready for me to reproduce this solution even it generated the explainability of the model if i click on explanation you can see the sharp values got created and even i see that the plots has been generated that show me the feature importance let's say the drop of date time was the most important feature import, uh, to predict the taxi fare so these are automatically generated because I'm using MLflow. This is awesome. And then evaluate the model. I do run, I think this is the last step. Okay, sorry, before registration. I evaluate the model with the test data. It shows the model performance, like, right? Model validation and feature importance. There you go. This also got created here automatically for me. I didn't code it actually in my use case, right? This is awesome. And lastly, I registered a model in MLflow and it give me the model name if I click on it it should go all the way to my ML for registry so I can see the list of my registered models there you go I go to registered models I see the taxi fare has been registered and I can move on from here use model for inferencing to go ahead and deploy the model that's it I hope you enjoyed this is a great capability I, I see sort of a, a, a new way to standardize all ML progress in regression classification the only thing is it is in experimental phase so please expect more updates coming in more recipes more templates and even changes over templates they are they are keen on hearing feedbacks so if you're giving it a try please do me a favor write down in the comment your feedback about risk capability even before you try what do you think about it so let's as a community brainstorm together and if you have ideas that how we can further make it improve let's actually contribute together to this great capability and make sure you write down your ideas in the comments and let's get in touch thanks for watching this video so far and we'll talk further in another topic within the next video work harder on yourself than you do on your job wishing you the greatest my friends take care and we'll see you shortly in the next video bye for now